Hi, I'm Doc Jenny. Join us in the Green Hornet as we travel the back roads of beautiful North Idaho. Every day is different, challenging, and never boring as we see all the farm animals, big and small. Doc Jenny here. Hey, today we're going to talk about bandaging a horse's leg. The bandaging process for a horse is really important because the horse below the knee doesn't have any muscle. It's all skin, bone, tendons, nerves, and arteries, which means that as we're bandaging injuries below the knee or below the hock, it's important that we protect those delicate structures while also protecting the wound. So bandaging the leg, it's important that we do it correctly or you can actually create more problems with an improperly applied bandage. We have here uh, some of the supplies that we will use in a standard equine bandage. A non-stick adherent pad of some kind that is gonna go over the wound. Uh, you're gonna, these come in lots of different sizes, so you're gonna wanna choose the kind that is most appropriate for the wound. A very common thing to find in a lot of horse people's uh, first aid kit would be a maxi pad or Kotex, which is great and absorbent for the short term, but because those are plastic backed, I don't like them on wounds for long term bandages. We wanna make sure that everything that we're putting onto the leg is nice and breathable. So this gauze pad is non-adherent and breathable. The gauze pad is going to be held on with a nice cling wrap cotton stretchy that's nice and soft to the skin and non-abrasive. So this will go directly over the wound pad and directly onto the skin. And then our next layer is going to be our cotton sheets. This is the most important layer for protecting all of the delicate structures in the leg. This provides enough cushion padding that we can put on a long-term standing wrap without having to worry about a tendon bow or injury to the leg from uh, the vet wrap causing any kind of a constriction on that leg. This is like our pantyhose. This is not as stretchy as our white conform, but it's going to go over the top of our cotton and smooth all of that area out. And that is going to allow us to make sure that there is even pressure from the top of the bandage to the bottom of the bandage. And then we have our wonderful vet wrap. This has got, it's, this is in every horse person's tack room. It's got lots of stretch, lots of, lots of give. It's very breathable. Everybody should have some vet wrap around. The important part of this vet wrap, as wonderful as it is, I never like to see this directly against the skin on a long-term manage. Maybe for the short term, like to hold on a Kotex until the vet gets there, that's fine. But long term, this stuff uh, will constrict around the horse's leg, especially if it gets wet, and it can also roll in. So if this is directly on the horse's leg, you can actually end up creating problems. And then we seal our bandage with this lovely Elasticon, and Carolyn will show how she seals both the top and the bandage, top and bottom of the bandage with this nice stretchy, sticky ace bandage that's got some give in it. We have several ointments here. Um, that we recommend and use for the horses. I went to an AEP lecture a couple of years ago and he said that he would not put anything on the horses on any wound that you don't put directly into an eye. So that pretty much narrows it down to saline <laughs> and a couple of other ointments. I don't like to use anything that is petroleum based because it puts a seal on that wound, can interfere with the oxygenation of the wound. So we've got silver sulfidizing cream which is a prescription item. This is a common uh, human burn cream. This is great for wounds and scuffs and abrasions. This is one that we really like. Um, I also use quite a bit of Corona. I typically do not use this under a bandage. I like the Corona because of the softening effect of the lanolin that is in there. Um, and so I'll usually use this for scuffs and scrapes outside of a bandage. Uh, we have a veterinary prescription product called Inoderm. It's actually licensed for cats and dogs, but I do use this in the horses as well. Uh, this is one that we would use uh, to prevent or treat proud flesh, which is excessive granulation tissue. 
Uh, the steroid in there does help to calm it down, but it does slow healing because that's the steroid's job, is to keep that slowed down a little bit. So that's one that we'll use sparingly. And then one of my favorite naturals is just a nice um, honey. I like the crystallized ones because it's less messy. Uh, we use a lot of honey in our wounds. It's kind of an old treatment. It is both antibacterial, antifungal, and it acts as a poultice because of the sugars in there, so it'll draw out swellings. No nitrofurazone. Nitrofurazone is one that has been in every horse owner's uh, closet for years and years. It is actually a carcinogen, and added to that list just here recently is a genison violet. So anything like the blue coat or um, any of the other ones that are the bright purple and turn your fingers blue, they've um, discovered that that can be uh, cancer causing in humans as well. So any of the ones that cause cancer, we try and keep off of our horses. So this is just a selection of ointments. These aren't the only ones out there, but these are some of the ones that we like. So Carolyn's gonna demonstrate from start to finish how to put this bandage on. So we'll turn it over to Carolyn. You just wanna go nice and even, 50-50 um, layovers, so you don't cause big bumps. Hey everybody. Thanks for riding with us in the Green Hornet today. This is Doc Jenny signing out. If you like what you saw, be sure and follow us in the Green Hornet with Tormund out on the road with Doc Jenny. Just click the link below and follow us along on our journeys. See you later.